bringing our country together. A six how a Supreme Court decision is impacting Super Tuesday this morning. The morale in schools, at least the school that I work at right now, is definitely not great. San Diego Unified is discussing hundreds of possible layoffs today. When we said it was a dream for all, that that's what we meant. We shouldn't move people to the front of the line. They haven't paid their dues. How a new proposal could help undocumented immigrants buy homes. You're watching CBS 8 Mornings at 6. And thank you so much for joining us on this Super Tuesday, everyone. At 6 a.m., I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Nettie Irampour. Glad you're with us here. And yes, if people are headed out to the polls, you're going to want to know the forecast, what to wear to be ready for today. Let's check in with Evan Narani. What's going on? So it's a dry Tuesday, dry okay. Super Tuesday, but then right. it'll be wet tomorrow mm -hmm. as we see some of those results come in. I guess not necessarily as the results come in because the rain is going to be reserved for the afternoon hours tomorrow, but still no excuse is what we're saying to get your ballots in today. Uh, forecast shows temperatures are going to be in the 60s out there, partly cloudy skies, a little bit more cloud cover in the morning than what we'll see by the time we get to the afternoon. 63 along the coast, 66 inland and satellite radar showing that those clouds are steadily breaking apart. So there are still some clouds out there. They're just not all that abundant. They'll be breaking apart, giving us partly cloudy conditions. Very similar to this sunrise view right now. 611 is sunrise. We have 10 minutes left, but you can see how there's a good amount of cloud cover out there. Not a ton, still some breaks in the clouds, but uh, allowing for a somewhat gray start to the morning. Coming up, we'll talk about that opportunity for rain tomorrow, how it's going to look for us. It's all in just a few. Back to you. Well, today is the biggest primary election day of the season. Californians will be joining voters in 14 other states, weighing in on various federal, state, and local races. And CBS 8's Regina Yorita live outside the San Diego County Registrar's Office. That's a voting center that will open here pretty soon in about an hour. Good morning, Regina. Yeah, that's correct. Good morning, Nanetta and Eric. It is Super Tuesday. Lots of exciting things ahead of us. A long day ahead of us, but of course, many people heading towards this direction by 7 a.m. because that is when doors will open. Over 200 voting centers will be opening up, so you can head to the closest one that's more convenient for you this morning. Of course, uh, you can uh, either drop off your ballot or go inside to vote. So here at the registrar's office, we saw dozens of people yesterday drive by dropping off their ballot at the official ballot drop off boxes that they have here. Uh, for those who want to vote but haven't registered, it's not too late to register and vote. You can still participate in the election. You may visit any voting center to conditionally register and vote provisionally. So there is still enough time. You just have to make sure that you get there before 8 p.m. If you're in line by 8 p.m., you can still vote. And we actually caught up with several voters yesterday who uh, were at the voting centers ahead of time. Take a listen. It's so important. This is one of the most important elections of our lifetime. And so to clarify, 200 voting centers will open up at 7 a.m. earlier than yesterday because it is Super Tuesday. So uh, if you want to make your voice count, this is the time, right? Not only are we voting on candidates for our next U.S. president, so it's not just a, an election revolving uh, former President Donald Trump and President Joe Biden, but really this is our local election, right? So if you have any concerns, whether it's potholes, these are concerns that we hear all the time from our viewers or uh certain school districts, right? This is the time for you to make your voice heard. So definitely look into some of the measures, uh, special elections. Chula Vista has a big one, the city of San Diego, several areas. So of course, your uh, vote, your ballot is dependent on where you live. So the school district that I'm in is probably different than the school district that you in. So definitely check that and see some of those important uh, measures that we will be voting on. So we will be here all morning, uh, of course, covering this special election, uh, the Super Tuesday, right? And uh, so stick with CBS 8. And of course, we will bring you the latest. I'll send things back to you, Ned and Eric. Gina, thank you. In the race for the president, the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled against Colorado's efforts to remove former President Donald Trump from the ballot. You cannot take somebody out of a race. The voters can take the person out of the race very quickly, but a court shouldn't be doing that. Tonight, Republic
Last night, Trump swept the North Dakota GOP caucuses for his Republican rival Nikki Haley. Today is a make or break night amid growing GOP calls for her to drop out of the race. On the Democratic side, President Biden faces two long shot challengers and continued resistance to his handling of the Israel Hamas war. Stay with CBS 8 for updates on California's primary. We're going to have team coverage throughout the day and have updates posted on our website. You can also follow us on social media or download the free CBS 8 app. And now in other news here today, the man accused of killing a local dentist will make his first court appearance. Police say Mohammed Abdul Karim shot 28 year old Benjamin Haruni at his dental office in El Cajon last Thursday. Here's a picture of the suspect. Two other people were hurt in that shooting. Police say Abdul Karim was a disgruntled former patient. Right now, police say there's no indication the attack was racially or politically motivated. Hundreds of San Diego Unified School District employees could be out of a job after this school year. Later this afternoon, the school board will vote on more than 400 proposed layoffs, including teachers, administrators, and support staff. CBS 8's Chris Grove, live outside district headquarters, where that meeting is going to take place here. Chris? Yeah, good morning, and that meeting happening at 5 p.m. The school board getting together, trying to figure out how to solve a $94 million budget deficit. Uh, we did hear from the teachers union and the representative there who says that they believe the school district needs to look at other options before considering cuts. These layoffs are not necessary. We cannot afford as a district to be cutting positions when we should be looking at how can we make our schools as strong as possible. Now that's Kyle Weinberg, teacher and president of the local teachers union of the more than 430 positions highlighted to be cut. 94 of them are teachers, 21 are central office administrators, five associate principals and one principal. Now, of course, again, the district trying to erase that deficit. You also have COVID era relief funds that are now dried up and no longer eligible to be used. Weinberg says that his union has proposed solutions that solve the budget crisis without the cuts or without as many cuts, but they are are scared that these cuts are still going to go through. We did speak with parents as well who have this to say about the possibility of seeing some of the teachers that their kids go to, that their kids see, uh, no longer having a job with the union, or excuse me, with the district. Well, as a mom, I'm worried that the class size will be too large and that the extra supports that we want for our kids will not be there. The parent you just heard from there, also a teacher. She asked for her face not to be shown, uh, again, just to make sure that she's completely protected. Now, Weinberg, the head of the teachers union, did say that those who would be cut first, if that is the decision that the district goes with, would be those with the least experience versus those who are more tenured. Eric and Netta. All right, Chris, thanks for that live report there. And now 608 and our forecast for today looks nice. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Get uh, out and vote because the weather's right. on your side. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> and I mean, when we look at the next eight days as a whole, mm. the only thing that we see as maybe a slight problem is tomorrow. Okay. That's going to be a rainy day that we okay. have. So, I mean, it's a generally very nice forecast, even in the extended models. It is just tomorrow in particular where we've got showers coming through that will likely bring us to maybe half an inch of accumulating rain. And then Thursday, things start to taper off. So Thursday morning, we'll still have some of those showers Thursday afternoon, perhaps before we head toward a dry Friday through the weekend and into the beginning of next week. Sunrise 611 on the clock. So we've still got another about two minutes or so, three minutes maybe. Uh, cloud cover is pretty abundant though, and we're gonna watch as those clouds break apart and as we move toward partial sunshine into the afternoon stretch. Tomorrow, PM rain starting up in the afternoon. By the time we get to Thursday, those showers are gonna persist into the AM hours. And then Thursday will also be the coolest day of the next eight days as a whole. So that's as that center of low pressure is right overhead. Our lowest pressure typically brings about our coldest temperatures. Friday and Saturday temperatures start to climb and it looks like Saturday will be our warmest day of the next eight days because we'll likely see some spots reach average, if not maybe even exceed average. Uh, upper 60s, even a chance for some low 70s in the forecast by that stretch. If you walk out the door right now, we are 
luckily seen some clouds out there. So in many cases, those clouds are helping to keep our overnight lows more mild. 56 right now in San Diego. You can kind of make out the spots that don't have as dense of cloud cover. The mountains, for example, are in the 30s to start off the day. Mount Laguna, Julian, Palomar Mountain, all at 38 degrees. Up in Oceanside, a little bit cooler at 48. And then Encinitas right now at 49 degrees to start off the morning. That wet weather is going to start just beyond 24 hours from now. Half an inch is expected, and then we'll be back to those dry skies by the time we get to about Thursday night into Friday. Uh, coming up, we'll time it all out for you, including that risk of thunderstorms in the forecast that could take place toward tomorrow evening. Let's check in on traffic, see how your roads are. It's a quiet start to the morning out there. Starting to see volume pick up just a bit on the five northbound from Chula Vista moving toward downtown San Diego, but that's just orange on the screen. So Slightly slower, but not exactly to the stop and go range. Uh, no major crashes in the greater downtown area on any of those major freeways. Midspan Coronado Bridge slowing down just a bit too. Let's check in on board of wait times as we head through our Tuesday morning. 105 minute wait, so just under two hours for the San Ysidro port of entry. If you're headed across the Otay Mesa port of entry, you can expect it to take about an hour and a half in total, just about 15 minutes faster than what we'll see at the San Ysidro port of entry. Eric Anetta. Thank you, Evan. Coming up next, a Texas law allowing police to arrest migrants who cross illegally is blocked, at least for now. Plus, a new proposal could help undocumented immigrants buy homes in California. We have both sides of the argument. And why a new study says you may want to skip the diet soda for lunch.